there guys, I'm Ashley and today I'm going to be recommending you some books that I consider to be easy reads. Not too long ago I did a video recommending fantasy retellings and while that was specifically based on the Mythotech Readathon and the challenges for that, I did realise when I was filming that video that I actually have never done videos specifically recommending books and so I thought I'd start this whole series where I do just that. So I do have the typical theme of seasonal recommendations coming up and I think the next recommendation video after this one will be the autumnal book recommendations. But I do have a few other categories as well and I'm starting off with the easy reads. Now when I say that these books are easy reads, I don't mean that in any kind of patronising or derogatory way. I just think that these books don't necessarily take as much brain power as a lot of the dense fantasy books that I usually read. Now if you've been on this channel for any amount of time then you've probably noticed that I don't really read contemporary books and so finding easy reads within my kind of reading taste can be quite difficult. And for that reason the books that I have chosen out are a really random selection but hopefully that will make it even more interesting because I don't typically talk about all of these books. But I am starting off with this video in particular because with it being September and people going back to school or university or college and whatnot, I think a lot of people do struggle to maintain their typical reading pace alongside all the work that they're doing. I know that I'm going to be struggling with it quite a lot in the next coming months. And so I thought I'd recommend some books that don't necessarily take as much brain power or dedication into reading. You can just pick them up, really easily fall into the story and read to your heart's content. <laughs> so after that babble of an introduction, let's just dive right in. So the first book that I'm going to recommend is How Long Till Black Future Month by N.K. Jemisin. N.K. Jemisin is most famously known for her fifth season series and this is actually a collection of short stories that are kind of urban fantasy sci-fi stories that also tackle the issue of race within them. Now that might not necessarily sound like an easy read because obviously with the issue of race being entwined then some of these stories can get quite intense. However, I do use the word entwined for good reason because I do think it's very subtly done. I think at one point when I read this book I did call it slightly uncomfortable just because it is very reminiscent of our world. But I do think the urban fantasy thing kind of gives you enough groundwork to be comfortable going into this book, not needing to know an entirely new world because it's very largely based on our own. You don't need to learn an entirely new order or system and it's just disconnected enough for you to feel like it's a new story and you can take yourself out of the world that we live in and escape into these ones. I don't read many short story collections because I do find it quite hard to enjoy them as a whole because all of the different short stories kind of make it difficult to rate, it's very unlikely that I will like all of the stories within a collection but out of all the short story collections that I have read I think this is the one that's been rated the highest and I do really want to read N.K. Jemisin's fifth season series but I am kind of waiting until I've gotten through more of the series on my shelf before starting a new one but yes, definitely think this would be a good place to start. Next up we have another book which would also kind of not be seen as an easy read in terms of general topic or setting but I am going to recommend The Dollmaker or Crack Out by R.M. Romero because this one is a historical fiction but it's set for children or a middle grade audience. So it's set during the Second World War and it follows a dollmaker who creates a doll and she actually comes to life. During this book they set out on an endeavour to save their Jewish friends. Now I will say that the grim atmosphere that the war would bring to a story is very much evident in this book, you can't really escape it, but I do think that the whimsical magical side of this very much counteracts it and gives it the perfect balance for children to be able to read a historical fiction. And even though I didn't read a book like this when I was younger, it just felt so nostalgic, I absolutely sped through it. Obviously it's aimed towards the younger audience so it's quicker to read in that respect anyway. And it's also just designed in a way that is absolutely stunning. Certain chapters start out as if they're a storybook, so we have designs like this with very little writing on the page. I read this quite a while ago and I still remember this to this day, which is saying quite a lot because I did used to read a lot of historical fiction and I don't remember them for the most part because I did read a lot of stories that were very similar, but this one very much stood out to me and I just loved it. It's a perfect counterbalance between the grim realities of the World War and also the magical whimsicalness that comes with a toy shop and a doll maker and magical storybook situations. I love this book, it's probably one of my favourite middle grades. Granted I don't read too many but I'd highly recommend this one, I don't see enough people talk about it. Next up I actually have a non-fiction and that might sound scary but I promise it's not because this follows a trend which you've probably seen. It was a very big trend of last year and I think it's still continuing now because this is one of those books which kind of compiles together short summaries of women who changed the world. 
So this one in particular is at Bygone Badass Broads by Mackenzie Lee and on the front it just says 52 Forgotten Women Who Changed the World. So this is literally just a collection of very small introductions to these women. They're all accompanied by absolutely stunning illustrations like this. Mackenzie Lee is more popularly known for writing the A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue series. I haven't read that series, this is the only thing I've read by Mackenzie Lee, but you can very much tell that she is a contemporary author because this is a very contemporary non-fiction book. She kind of references things that you would know on social media. There's some jokes made, it's very accessible to read, and I do think that this is a very good place to start. There are obviously a lot of books like this. I do also particularly like the book What Would Boudicca Do? But this is the one that I started with. I absolutely sped through it. Obviously there's not too much writing to read, but it's just enough to give you a very good overview of 52 incredible sounding women. And I don't know about you, but I always feel particularly productive when I manage to read a non-fiction book quickly. So this is very much one of those books that would give you that feeling. Going back to the middle grade, I do also have City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. Again, I don't really read middle grade all that often, but I do think this one is a particularly good one because Victoria Schwab is very good at writing atmosphere. So this one follows Cassidy Blake, whose parents are kind of paranormal detectives, and they've actually just been offered a TV deal to go to Edinburgh and create a TV show about ghost hunting. What her parents don't know is that Cassidy actually can see ghosts, and so going to Edinburgh, which is dubbed one of the most haunted cities in the world, Pause is quite a problem for her. I read this book in about two hours, which never happens, but obviously it's quite a small book, it's a middle grade, easy to read in that sense, but also it's just addictive. There's something about Victoria Schwab writing which is so addictive to read, and as I said before, the atmosphere in this is just perfect. It very much has the spooky atmosphere that you would expect with ghost hunting and ghostly stories, but you can also feel the history within it, which I particularly loved because I feel like a lot of ghostly presences in stories only really focus on the spirit side of things, which obviously is important, but I also just like knowing the history and being able to feel it, especially because this one is set in Edinburgh. I don't think it would have felt natural if the history side of things was just lacking. I do think Victoria Shaw's writing has improved over time because I didn't really like her previous middle grade, which was The Near Witch. This one is so much better and I completely fell for it. It's a very easy read and I do intend on picking up the second book myself sometime soon, so yeah. <laughs> The next one, I don't really know whether you'd categorise it as middle grade or the younger side of young adult. I'd say the younger side of young adult, but I think that's because we don't have the middle grade option in the UK. But it's definitely older than the previous two middle grades that I mentioned, and this one is Oh My Gods by Alexandra Shepherd. This one is a Greek mythology retelling, and it follows a girl who has to move down to London to move in with her father and step-siblings. As if moving across the country and settling into a new school wasn't hard enough already, she also has a massive secret that she has to keep because it turns out her father is Zeus and her step-siblings are all the other Greek gods. <laughs> this one is such a fun and light-hearted read. I absolutely loved it. I didn't think I would because it's not my sort of thing. It's very much more on the contemporary side of fantasy, but the fantasy elements are there. Obviously with it following a younger character, I think she's around 14, some of the rationality and the reasoning and the reactions just isn't really how we would respond, but I do think that's what makes half of the entertainment and I just love the like family and friendship aspect of it as well. I feel like you don't see that too often, but it was really refreshing to see in this. And if you do want a Greek mythology inspired book which doesn't come with the heaviness of Greek mythology, then this is definitely the place to go. It's so much fun. And while I do usually read books that are a lot grittier and darker or just more intense world building wise, sometimes you just need a book like this and it came along for me at the exact right time. So I will always recommend this one. I loved it. So we're done with the middle grades now and the next one is actually a sci-fi which I didn't expect to put in this video because I feel like a lot of science fiction books are not easy reads at all. A lot of them, at least the ones that I've read, really overload you with the scientific terminology and it can just be quite difficult to keep up with. But this series in particular I read pretty recently and I just flew through it which highly unexpected because I'm not a sci-fi reader but this one just captured my attention entirely. And that is Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvelle. This follows a girl who kind of falls into this big hole in the ground only to discover that she actually fell into a giant open metal hand. When this girl becomes an older woman, she actually becomes part of a team of scientists who are trying to find out 
where this metal hand came from, what it's part of, if they can put it back together, things like that. But this story goes so much further than that and it's so intense, so incredibly addictive to read. It's largely written in an interview format so it's very quick to read through page wise. And as I said, I don't usually read sci-fi so for me to become really invested in the series was incredible. I read all three books within about two weeks, if that. And I do think that if you want to start out reading sci-fi or if you just want a sci-fi that won't take too much effort to fall into, then this is definitely the place to go because it was just incredible. I absolutely loved it. Would highly recommend. And so we're on to the final book recommendation and it's another one that I read pretty recently actually because that is Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. This might come as a surprise because it's a pretty huge book. So this one is inspired by Korean folklore and follows an 18 year old girl who's actually a gummy hoe. A gummy hoe being a nine tailed fox who feeds off the souls of men. But she loses her fox speed which is the thing she needs to be able to do so and so she has 100 days to get that back before she starves. There are a lot of mixed reviews for this book but I personally really enjoyed it. I completely fell into the story. I feel like the characters' storylines and their personalities are really easy to just sink into. It took absolutely no effort on my part to just completely become invested in this world. Even though it was very different from my own because not only is it inspired by folklore and mythology, it's also set in Korea which is a completely different culture to my own. But I just found it absolutely fascinating to read about and so addictive to read. It was really quick paced, the audiobook for this one as well is particularly good if you like that sort of thing. While it is quite a chunky book, I completely sped through it, which I think I've said about all of these books, so... We have a theme. <laughs> so while there are mixed reviews, if you are interested in this book at all, I would highly recommend it. I think it was really good. I do think it would be a really easy one to read while you're doing other stuff as well, because it's not too intense, it's not too in-depth. It's just enough of an addictive, entertaining storyline for you to be able to escape in it and then return back to reality when you need to. So those are all the books I'm recommending in this video. Let me know if you've read any of these and what your thoughts on them were if you have. If you have any book recommendations that you think would fit into this easy read kind of category then please let me know down in the comments because I'm always intrigued to hear more about them. As I said I feel like a lot of the books that I read are quite intense and so with going into my final year of university and working and every other thing I have going on I feel like I need some kind of easier reads to counterbalance my university reading so maybe I'll take some recommendations of my own. <laughs> But that's it for this video, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then leave a like and a comment to let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing that. But for now, I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.